Well, uh, this isn't the usual start to one of my videos, is it? No, I've gone a bit fancy here with a slow zoom. Uh, I think they call it that anyway. <laughs> slow drive-by droney zoom shot. Anyway, uh, I'm out at the Seven Half Diamond Ranch and I've, I've taken this as an excerpt uh, from a bit of a day of experience stuff that we had. Uh, prepared by Land Rover Kelowna. It's a sort of a pseudo Land Rover experience day, really, a bit sort of a vanilla version of one. Anyway, what I've done is I've taken a bunch of footage and I've, I've sort of released this video uh, kind of as its own sort of thing because I thought it would be handy and a, a, a quick reference for folk. Anyway, the upcoming video is going to be on the operation of the ATPC, which is Land Rover's all-terrain progress control on a Discovery 5. Now, hitherto I have been quite chastising of, of this t function on the on the, on the the Land Rover vehicles, but uh, I've recorded this video to, to kind of make amends, really. Anyway, Gypster, as you can just see, is about to attack this drone here. Gypster and I are going to proceed uh, to show you how to use the all-terrain progress control on a Discovery 5. Right, you'll have to excuse state of cab here, but I wanted to show you, while I was here, the functionality of the all-terrain progress control. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to engage grass, gravel and snow mode so uh, you can see the differential locks and some other stuff. Now, I've got this in the Drive Assist program here, and, and Drive Assist is accessed um, if we just go to the home function here. Uh, you press the little house to get you to home. Uh, no, we don't need that. Home function. So this is your standard sort of thing. You press your four-wheel drive mountains affair. You get three um, options here. I'm going to... Off-road information gives you all your axles, but I've also got that here, if you can see. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select drive assist, which gives me pretty pictures. Uh, and on the side here you'll have the off-road information which is also here uh, these you can adjust but these just show you the position of the wheels and they're from your from your door mirrors but I've selected grass gravel and snow mode through my TRS here I don't really need it because it's not that bad but this button here the little car and the steering with the speedo is uh, all-terrain progress control and you press it and it's a bit like a cross between ill descent control and uh, and uh, what's the other thing? Ill descent control and cruise control, really. It's a bit of a combination of the pair of them stuck together, I suppose. Any road, um, what you can do is you can operate the, 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 the setting by using these set buttons for the cruise control on your thing. Now, if you, if you don't press the accelerator, it just goes into what they call ill descent mode. Well, they call it stage one or whatever it is. But uh, what I've done here is I've set it at seven kilometers an hour. You can see that it's sort of just moved on you can set it for faster or slower if i wanted it to go slower i'd just press the minus button um and uh and if i press the brake pedal uh oh, yeah, it is wrong uh and if you press the brake pedal it goes into um uh in into like the first stage if you see what i mean but anyway we'll set it now uh atpc set for four kilometers an hour and i did that just by clicking the button and a little bit faster because as you can see the terrain's not particularly dodgy so we're doing about six kilometers an hour here. um now with the two i have been quite cheerless about the all uh, all terrain progress control because frankly i've found it fairly useless but i, I caveat that with the fact that I, I i've used it in snow and one of the downsides to the all-terrain progress control is that it can't anticipate what's coming and snow, uh, especially blowing snow, is the kind of terrain that you sort of need to be able to see in advance and then kind of accelerate towards if you see a drift or a deeper patch on the road or whatever because uh, frankly you need, to, you need a bit of momentum to get through those sort of things. It's very icy down here because we had ice and snow we had a uh, very wet snow that froze and then it snowed on top of it so it's but it is quite deep you can see the land rover was going through this snow here which is well here's me and here's my knee can i show you how deep that is there's my knee and there's the top of the bank so we're hip height i would say which is probably well over the top of the wheel arch protection kit Whoa. But anyway, um, as I say, engaged. Whoa. 
I ain't got... <laughs> Must be minus five or seven out there. It's windy anyway. So I engaged all these controls, uh, the race suspension and the low ratio and the mud and ruts. Now, uh, I didn't use grass, gravel and snow because if you're in deep snow, you don't want grass, gravel and snow. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but what you want is something that gives you a lot of power. So mud and ruts or sand would have worked in there. But I engaged mud and ruts because I wanted the axle articulation as well that the mud and ruts gives you. And then I basically gave it the beans and out it came. So we're just going to go back. Uh, and this affords me an excellent opportunity to explain to you why it is that I'm not actually a fan of automatic tra uh, what, automatic progress traction control or whatever, ATPC or whatever it is that it is. And, and the reason for that is because I, I knew that as I was going into here, I was going to need a bit more gas. But, in order to prove a point that the vehicle would accelerate a little bit to maintain that speed or sort of let it get going, and this is where one of the times when the driver's anticipation of the situation is more accurate or important than the, the vehicle's ability to sense and anticipate the track ground in front of him. So I knew that I needed more beams because I knew that it was sort of cut in the corner and I could feel that it was getting bogged down and didn't have enough momentum. So I could have, at that point, provided a bit more throttle, and I still could, really, with the automatic uh, terrain, automatic progress terrain response, or whatever it's called. Um, I can't just think of the words of it now. Uh, but for purposes of what we were doing, I just wanted to show you how it went on, and, and of course that got me into a bit of a, a drama, didn't it? But on this kind of terrain, you don't have that problem because you've got fairly good visibility and it's just nice, I suppose, if that's the way you want to play it, uh, to take your foot off the gas pedal, and you can't see here because I don't know that the camera will show you, but no gas pedal here. Um, and the all terrain progress control will maintain a steady and smooth speed at, at well, whatever you set it to. It'll go up to about 30 kilometers an hour, I think, uh, for, I don't know, field work or whatever you want to do. But um, there are a couple of little bits of uh, bumps and rocks and things here, so I'm going to go a little bit slower than, uh, than that because obviously I don't want to hit one of those stones and bounce up into the air or whatever. Um, now, one of the interesting things about all-terrain progress control is that it, it, it uses HDC. You can see we're just going down a bit of a, a bank here now. Uh, it uses HDC uh, in conjunction with sort of a, a kind of a cruise control, I guess, and, and you end up going down the hill at the same speed as you'd go on the flat, I suppose. And... Uh, it also works going uphill so if I were, this is a bit of a bank here but if I were to turn around and come back up this, it would apply throttle uh, to to give me enough you know, speed to go up the hill at the same speed, 8 kilometres an hour uh, now you can change the speed of this as I've said by using these uh, cruise control buttons and because this is a bit steeper I'm just going to knock it down to 7 kilometres an hour and it'll apply It'll use the brakes um, in conjunction with the well. It'll use the brakes um, and uh, and and reduce the speed of the car. Going up the hill, if you've run out of speed, if you run out of gears, uh, then it will change gear for you as well, in order to make sure that you approach the the hill at the requisite level of speed. If that makes sense. So, um, in in short, uh, in some circumstances. This is actually quite helpful, uh, but, it, but it has limits, and its limits are, as I've mentioned before, that kind of terrain where you need to either be able to anticipate what's coming ahead. You can see it's just accelerated here on its own, up that little bit of a rise. We'll just speed up a little bit, now we're on the flat. Um, so in that kind of terrain where you need to be able to anticipate in advance and apply quite a little bit more uh, power in order to manipulate the terrain, for instance large hills or uh, bomb hills as we used to call them back home, uh, then it's unlikely that the ATPC will help because let's imagine you've gone down a big pothole and up the other side and you're cresting a quite sharp hill and you've no idea what's on the other side. Well, 
if you've no idea what's on the other side, then then you don't want to be careering over the top of it at, I don't know, 8 or 10 kilometres an hour or whatever it is, or do 5 mile an hour or whatever speed you set it at. What you want to be able to do is just take your foot off the gas when you get to the top and hold it there. And, of course, it won't do that. Now, you can certainly stomp on the brakes, but in my opinion, I think you've got a bit more control if you're on the gas pedal instead of letting the automated stuff do it for you. Additionally, you don't want to be using all-terrain progress control in, in river crossings because you need to be able to feel the feedback from the from what's underneath the, the floor, uh, nor do you want to be using it in snow. Uh, I can't speak to sand because, of course, I've, uh, we're in the middle of the mountains here. We don't have much sand. Uh, then boffins in Australia will give you more information on that. Um, and I think part of the thing that sort of irritated me a bit in regards to this is, uh, to the ATPC, uh, is basically that you don't get to see, you don't get that feedback um, from the terrain through your pedal. You, you don't feel how, how much power you're applying or, and this is getting a bit rough here, so I'll just slow down a bit by dropping the speed on my cruise control. Uh, so you don't get that feedback from your throttle, so you don't feel how much power is being applied, and that's kind of um, that's kind of one of the sorts of things that that bothers me. If you see what I mean about the ATPC, it sort of removes the driver input. Well, I imagine as is intended that if you don't have a lot of experience then the ATPC may help you negotiate those sorts of things. Um, now here of course we've got a bit of a uh, a little bit of a I don't know what you call that a little bit of a bend or whatever and and the ATPC did apply power where it needed it but I would have liked to have been able to back off a little bit there and go more slowly around the corner but it is what it is uh, and so it does help those people that don't have that experience I suppose. So what I will say is that um, you can hear it playing about with throttle here look. What I am going to say is further to my previous uh, evaluation that is frankly useless I will say that on sort of vanilla terrain like this uh, where you perhaps don't want to be jolting the pedal about then what you will find is the ATPC will help uh, reduce you know the the effort you expend in your in your legs or whatever and your feet and your calves and you've got more control uh, in terms of jostling about and the computer sort of does it all for you and, and basically that's that so uh, I will revise my comments and say yes I can I can see a bit of an ill here you see and you can hear it or well, perhaps you can't because I'm wearing a microphone but it's applying more gear uh, more power and it has changed gear for me there to give me some more power up this hill uh, so there you go that's what I'm going to say uh, yes I do f I do perceive a time in when uh, in which this is is more useful and um, and it's not actually frankly as useless as I had perceived it to be <laughs> uh, but I think it also has its limitations you can see here, Amica have driven hard, which is an excellent YouTube channel you should like and subscribe to. And uh, Richard's Ranger over there, look next to Danny. Anyway, as I pan and tilt out, technical camera terms there, look, look at me go, and leave you with this achingly beautiful shot of the 7 half Diamond Ranch. I'm going to say thank you very much for tuning in. I do hope that was a helpful video for you. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next video. Cheerio!